Hey everyone, this is Nikon Shah from HP Aruba Networking's WLAN TME Group and this is going to be the first video in the series Simple and Secure Networking. In this video, we will look at initial provisioning of an AOS 10 gateway, which will not only be acting as a branch firewall, but also a device which will help us achieve unified threat management or UTM as we call it. We will see how simple and quick it is to get your branch up and running within minutes. We are going to use a 9004 for this demo, but you can use any of the other Aruba gateways. I have already done the first two steps of adding the device to my GreenLake account and assigning the subscriptions. Next, we will be going through the steps required to be done before onboarding a device. We'll start off by creating a group and select the type of devices this group is going to contain. I'm selecting access points in addition to the gateways since we'll be adding APs in one of the following videos. This is optional and you could just select gateways. Select AOS 10 here, network role for APs as campus slash branch and role for gateways as branch since the branch gateway will be having LAN and WAN interfaces. Now we will go to the group config page for the gateways and go through the very simple guided wizard. One thing to note here is that this group level config needs to be done only one time and can be reused for multiple devices at various sites. This will not only help us to be more efficient, but also build a consistent configuration. Begin by selecting the gateway model type that this group will contain and we'll enable auto site clustering since we will be adding a second gateway in the second video to talk about clustering. We'll quickly provide NTP and time zone here. Add a DNS server on the next page. And please remember that this DNS server will be needed for the device to talk to central. So it will be better to use a public DNS server. Then we'll add a management user, which will be the login credentials that will be pushed to the device. Click finish and move on to the LAN config for the group. If you want to run the DHCP server on your branch firewall, then you can enable it here. I'll add two VLANs for my LAN side. That is the first one is a management VLAN as VLAN 100. And the second one is a user VLAN as VLAN 200 and click next. On the next page, I'll assign these two VLANs on my port GE000 as trunk port and also assign native and allowed VLANs here and click next. Next, we'll move on to the WAN config of the group. Leave the health check to default, load balancing depending on your choice, and then add my WAN port that I will be using for ZTP. Give it a name. The type is going to be internet, IP addressing as DHCP since I'm using ZTP, and assign port 003. That completes the initial config required to bring up your branch gateway. As best practice, we need to define some firewall policies, but this initial config should be enough to bring up a gateway. Also, another thing to note here is that the default config will secure the WAN interface with a very restrictive ACL. This should work great in our case, as we'll be using ZTNA for remote access. So we won't need to worry about any inbound flows. We'll look at that in detail in future videos. One good practice is to always set the firmware compliance on the group so that whenever a device comes up in the group, it will be upgraded to the set firmware. I'll select the latest available firmware and select auto reboot option. One thing to note here is that if your branch gateway is currently running Aruba OS 8, it might take around 15 minutes to upgrade your box to Aruba OS 10 as noted here. This is because it has to upgrade the BIOS if the factory image is very old. But the good news is that we can use this time to do the next steps, which doesn't need the device to be online. Next, I'll pre-provision the device to the newly created group so that whenever my devices come up, they will land directly in this newly created group and receive their config. Now it's time to power on my device and I will connect port 003 to my uplink router. 
in a couple of minutes my device will come up on central this is completely optional but if you want you can see how the device goes through ZTB process if you have console access while the devices go through the ZTP process, we can configure some of the device level parameters. Going to the device level config by clicking on the device itself and then going to device menu on the left pane. We can begin by giving the subnet definitions for the two VLANs I had created earlier. I will begin by giving IP address details for the first VLAN. I will be running the DHCP server for management VLAN for IP address assignment for all networking devices at my branch. I'll do the same for my user VLAN for all my wired and wireless users. Begin by giving IP address details for this VLAN and then configuring the DHCP details for the second VLAN in the same manner as we did for the first one. Next, we will assign a system IP for the branch gateway and I'll select my management VLAN and finally provide a friendly host name for the device here. One last thing that should be done as a best practice is to assign a site for this new device. And that brings us to the end of all the basic config required to bring up a site and a branch gateway within that site. A few minutes have passed and as we can see, the device has come up online. There you go. There's your first site up and running in under 20 minutes. It will take even less time for all your subsequent sites since the group config is already in place. You will just need to go on adding new devices to the new sites and just go through the device level config. That brings us to the end of this first video. In the next video, we will see how to add a second branch gateway to this site and how clustering works. Have a good one.